Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So in the previous video, I talked about calculus being easy when you know the facts. There's no ma magic, no limit theory required, no real analysis bullshit, no smoke and mirrors. Um, but of course, and I got some comments, obviously, from people that didn't watch the video through to the end. Uh, two comments here. You can read them in your own good time. So what was the problem that Newton and Leibniz were trying to solve? Okay, just very simple. They were trying to find the tangent line, uh, the slope of this green tangent line, okay? They were trying to find the slope of this tangent line. There was a very easy solution, by the way, which I found. I was the only human to discover it. It's called the new calculus. And what I do is I use a parallel secant line, which always is the same slope as the as the tangent line. Okay. So, and of course, you can read about that in my free ebook, which is listed in the details section, an introduction to the single variable new calculus. However, I wanted to explain and I did explain I was the first human to explain why Newton's method worked Newton's or Leibniz's method I'm going to say Newton now but it means Newton and Leibniz so they didn't understand why their method works and neither did anyone who came after them until of course I came along okay so I explained what Bishop Berkeley could not explain to them he could see that the, <clears throat> there was a problem <clears throat> and he was not able to explain it. And of course, they weren't able to explain it either. I'm talking about Newton and Leibniz. So that was the initial problem, trying to find the slope of a tangent line. So what did Newton do? Well, this is what he did. He started uh, drawing secant lines, which were closer and closer to the tangent line. <laughs> And of course, at the point of tangency, there's no finite difference. You see, because what Newton would do is he would take this finite difference, f of x plus h minus f of x, and divide it by h. Okay, that's what he would do <clears throat> to get closer answers to the <clears throat> slope of the tangent line. Uh, but that wasn't the correct approach. And... Well, in a sense, it didn't really matter that he did that because when you take this finite difference, as you'll see in the holy grail of calculus, in this expression here, you'll see that it doesn't matter that he's doing this because we can just ignore the slope difference. The slope difference is the difference between this red secant line and the green secant line. What it means is that as you get to the point of tangency, the slope difference disappears, right? Okay, there's no more difference. So when Newton and Leibniz just disregarded the terms in H, they did the right thing because, for example, if you have uh, the derivative of x squared, this is the function x squared, by the way, <clears throat> which turns out to be, when you simplify this quotient, turns out to be 2x plus h. The h is actually this q of x comma h term okay so the, it's the slope difference all right that's what the h is that's all explained in the holy grail and it shows you how to rigorize your mainstream calculus without the bullshit of limit theory so limit theory says that h approaches uh, zero actually h doesn't approach anything all these secant lines here and let's put a trace on them they've been there <laughs> they've been there since past perpetuity and they shall continue to be there okay it'll always be there so nothing's approaching anything nothing is changing okay same story with uh, h okay here's h i don't know if this, this is going to show a trace but let's try so h there you go see it's always there nothing nothing changes i mean uh, nothing is approaching anything all those horizontal distances are all there Okay, so um, his method was basically a workable method if he was able to explain it, but he wasn't able to explain it. However, 
if you try to use uh, Newton's uh, methods without knowing my holy grail of calculus, you won't have a seamless transition to integration because from in from this one identity that you see here, red, green, and gold, you get both a derivative and the definite integral. Very easy. And you can read about that in the holy grail of calculus. It's a article listed in the detail section of my YouTube. So let's get that out of the way. So the tangent line problem basically involved, here's, here's the slope of the, this uh, red second line. It involved basically trying to get it as close as possible to the tangent line. But at the point of tangency, it disappears. It's not there anymore. This finite difference, this finite difference, this difference here, do you see? Disappears, okay? Disappears entirely. Can you see that? It'll just, boom, gone. So there's no finite difference, right? So limit theory is a hand-waving explanation. It's not needed in calculus. And uh, as I said, the Holy Grail handles it perfectly. And the new calculus is the first rigorous formulation, which also has a not only a seamless uh, connection between slope and area, but also helps to define the derivative and definite integral without using limits, infinity, or infinitesimals, or any other ill-formed nonsense. Okay, so, so that's what the tangent line is. So, so if you look at the slope between the red, red secant line, which is not parallel to this line, okay, then you'll find that there's always a difference. Now, what is dy dx? Well, all dy dx <coughs> is this, <coughs> excuse me, symbolic fraction. It's a definite fraction, by the way. It's not just a notation. It's, it's an actual rise over run of what? Of the tangent line, okay? And it doesn't matter where you are along here, okay? It doesn't matter where you are. Move this here. It doesn't matter. Anywhere along there, the dy dx the dy dx will always give you the same value too, right? See, it doesn't matter how you move it. All of these triangles are similar. This here is exactly dy, and this here is exactly dx, okay? dy dx. There's nothing mystical or magical. You don't have the crap that Gilbert Strang and all the idiotic mainstream academics talk about when they say delta y over delta x goes to dy dx as h goes to zero. That's all just garbage. You don't need it. dy and dx are, they are differentials. dy is equal to this uh, expression here, f of x plus h minus f of x, and dx will be equal to h, okay? And the way you can get that is if you put that straight on there and you put that straight on there, see? then you get the same values. Okay, there you go. All right, does that make sense? So, um, there's nothing about infinity there or infinitesimals. The, the term 2x, when you get the term 2x plus h after you, after you simplify the finite difference quotient for x squared, which is this curve here, is the derivative. This 2x is the derivative, and h, and h is the difference quote is the uh, slope difference. Okay, is the this expression here? Okay, that's all it is. So and dy dx, dy dx are differentials, which are numbers, by the way. Okay, or magnitudes if you can't find the number, the number's exact, or the magnitude's exact measure, then it remains a magnitude, okay? So, um, all this is good, but the new calculus sorts out the problem with the parallel secant line, which means the, <coughs> the slope of the tangent line is always there, and nothing approaches anything, by the way. Can you see that? All those parallel secant lines have been there since eternity, and they shall continue to be there. And all these tangent lines, by the way, do not change their slopes. 
they've had the same slope in past perpetuity and they will continue to have the same slope indefinitely, forever, whether humans think of them or not. So that idiot Gilbert Strang with his instantaneous rates of change and all the other drivel that he basically peddles on the internet and that you see in the videos that I talked about. So if you go over here and you look at these, the content. So this is the content. Uh, here's, in this video, how I, exp I express what the idiot Gilbert Strang does in the video called The Dick Picture. Okay, he actually calls it the big picture, but it's a load of crap, and I explain to you why it's all wrong. So, what you need to do is study these things. I'll also place a link to this applet if you want to download it and play with it. I do know better than anybody else, by the way. I am a genius. I'm much smarter than you will ever be. <laughs> I don't care if you think that's hubris or arrogance. That's your problem. Um, the onus is on you to prove that I'm either wrong or right. So I challenge you. Prove it to yourself. Okay, go ahead. Question everything that I've told you because that's the way, the only way you'll understand. So I'm not telling you to believe me. I don't, I hate that word belief. It doesn't belong in mathematics. It's like set theory and ZFC, which are the modern garbage foundations of mathematics, okay? The true foundations are Euclid's elements, and there is no such thing as an axiom in sound mathematics. That came about because the blundering morons of the last uh, couple of thousand years didn't understand the elements, okay? I do. I actually am a descendant of the ancient Greeks, 55% Greek. Okay. So if you're not already a subscriber, become one, tell your friends about this, click like, and follow me on academia.edu, and I'll place a link to all those things in the details section. Till next time, I'm John Gabriel. Goodbye.